In the last episode, we killed the Abyssal Remnant in the dregs. It dropped the Staff of Triumvirate. Reading the script on the staff, it refers to a ritual we need to perform on the altar in the Tower of Bats using blood. We will meet again, dead man. Hi there, I'm Rovoth and welcome to Conan Exiles on the PlayStation 4. I uh, have to apologise about my voice, I've got a bit of man flu this week it seems. But behind me is the Tower of Bats. The ruin rests upon an isolated desert mesa and can be only accessed by climbing to the top. The north side is the most advisable to climb as there is lots of ledges to recover stamina. But why take the stairs when you can take the lift? When you get to the top, you are looking for the altar of the bat, which is up the stairs on the centre platform, guarded by a very large white demon bat called White Death or the Albino Bat. We need to kill him and take his blood. Just before we head up to him though, there is a faded note to the left of the door where we can learn new cooking recipes. The easiest way I've found to kill the bat is to kite it towards the door opening and use volatile orbs to kill him. Just make sure the toxin has dispersed before you try to skin him. Head up to the altar, add the staff and the albino demon blood you collected into it. The altar will raise up and a blue portal will form. The portal cannot be used and is just for aesthetics. Though this one is bugged, it does not affect the modification of the staff. Once complete, take the now awakened staff of the triumvirate and add it to your hot bar. Then place it down as you would any object and talk to it. Tell you how to get rid of it. 
So after the staff has rambled on a bit, we can ascertain that we should visit the archivist in the unnamed city. We are near the Dawn Gate entrance and now have one of two choices. Slowly fight our way past the skeletons and dragons patrolling, or run. <coughs> I would advise running for now, as the skeletons can quickly outnumber you, especially if you're a solo player. The Dawn Gate is located to the east of the city, and the Archivist is located near the centre. We need to aim for the staircase that leads down to the obelisk in the centre. Don't forget to retune your bracelet to the obelisk if you've not done so already. For those unaware, the obelisks are used as fast travel points across the map with 10 in total to retune. From the obelisk, head directly north and into the archives building. You'll gain corruption in this area, so keep running until you reach the archivist's chamber. Here we get a view of what the map room will look like once crafted. It is huge, and if you are looking to craft a building to house it, you will need to consider its design very carefully if you seek to enclose it, as the map room sits roughly 8x8 eight eight foundations wide. I am jumping ahead with that information though, as we need to speak to the archivist and learn the cartographer religion to be able to craft the map room. Do not be afraid, bonded one. I was called the Archivist. Have you come to seek a way free of the bonding bracelet, human? There are various items that we need to collect in order to craft a keystone that will then remove the bracelet. You must assemble the items of power, the diadem of the giant kings, the mask of the witch queen, the tears of two races, the star of the champion, the heart of the sands, the shining trapezohedron, and the Serpent Ring of Set. Currently, the Serpent Ring of Set is not required to open the bracelet. Now that the Archivist has revealed the artifacts required, the Awakened Staff now simply acts as a guide in the search for the artifacts that will send us far and wide across the map, and gives a reminder of what and where the artifact is located. We start with a diadem, which means Crown of the Giant Kings. Artifact of singularly unimpressive power. Uh, my former master, known as the Priest King, used to wear it as a symbol of his authority. Uh, his head looked like a carrot with a silver belt wrapped around it. <laughs> but certainly provided him with all the qualities you'd expect of an elderly authority figure. Stuffiness, a great love of his own voice, and the inability to control his bowels. <laughs> uh, the last time I saw his face, was tumbling down into the dregs. It was right before he went north to do battle with his half-breed son, Tyrus. I'll check the northern battle. Someone has probably smelled him. <laughs> this artifact once belonged to the Priest King, now known as the Barrow King. We can find him in a cave to the west, past the Mounds of the Dead, which is an extremely long journey to make.
We are at the entrance to the cave. Now we cannot open the door, however there is a note to the right of the door that reveals how. We need a drop of demon blood in our inventory. This does not get used in the process however, but um, be mindful because you are unable to place a bedroll in the cave. So if you die, you will respawn outside the cave with no gear and that means no blood access. So in addition to a bedroll, I would place a storage box with demon blood in to ensure you can still reach your body to loot it. He may look impressive, but the bigger they are, the harder they fall. He is a manageable boss, with many of his attacks missing, also if you avoid his main frontal attack, but still bring food, healing wraps and ambrosia, that is if you have Mitra as one of your religions. I have the gamma settings increased, oh it is dark using the two-handed sword, let's kite him in the light and fight him there. I am mortal. stand toe to toe with this boss and the two-handed sword is feeling a bit cumbersome I need to heal up here keep moving dodging to the left is better and we are oh and we are stuck Starting to get the hang of it. Dodging left is making him completely miss with that lunge. He's still taking the health of us, but not nearly as bad as the start of the fight. Let's switch to the one-handed longsword and torch so I can see there. We've got him down to about two-thirds health. Oh, he's missed again. Oh, uh, uh, he's disappeared under the mesh. Well, at least I can still hear him. Rejoin the action towards the end of the fight. His head is above the ground, so I'm just about able to hit him, but he was still more than able to hit me too, breaking much of my armor in the process. But he's nearly dead. Oh, and thankfully, Ant still loot his body. I was worried he would just disappear under the mesh again. Now, to get the diadem and the giant kings, make sure to harvest his corpse. The item will drop along with a nice amount of demon blood for making the map room. Let's head back to our base and begin crafting the map room. Once complete, it will make travelling over the map much easier via the obelisks. For now, let's review the materials that are required. We need 200 corrupted stone, 35 iron reinforcements, 75 alchemical base and 50 crystal. I will cover the most difficult materials together. The corrupted stone is made using 400 stone, 200 ichor and 200 demon blood. 
Ica can be harvested from the spiders in and around Death Whisper ruins. As for the demon blood, there are a number of locations to get demon blood depending on your level. You could stay and farm the Barra King. Shieldback Hollow is populated with demonic Shieldback, and although this location is highly rated, I found that killing several mobs would only yield 6 to 10 blood. Be careful though not to overwhelm yourself with mobs as you attack one, you will automatically aggro any others near it. However, they do not cross the threshold at the entrance of the cave, and you can use that to your advantage. You can also head into the Omnian city and kill dragons or bats, but would recommend you do this with the companion. There are also undead hyena, found in a sinkhole above the arena. However, these tend to drop between 0 and 8 blood. Perhaps the best area I found was to kill sand beasts that patrol the sand swept ruins. I was able to get between 9 and 16 blood with each visit to the area. These figures are from my personal experience of harvesting mobs, and after wondering what would be the best tool for harvesting the blood, I found a tweet released from Funcom that stated that no tool is better than the other for harvesting between the pick, hatchet or daggers. But I personally preferred the pick, however there is always going to be that element of RNG. The alchemical base is made using 150 ichor, 150 silver dust and 75 gold dust. For the gold you can mine obsidian nodes at the volcano for goldstone and further to the other areas I've already mentioned, whilst there killing the volcanic variation of the shield bath for more demon blood. Three goldstone makes one gold bar. This can then be ground down to provide ten gold dust per bar. If you have any gold coins, these can also be ground down to give two gold dust per coin. For silver, you can mine for silverstone either at the mine southeast of Sepamuru City or in the swamp at the descent of Dagon. Again, like the gold, three silverstone will make one silver bar and this grinds to ten silver dust. Any silver coins you've collected will grind to two silver dust per coin. If you're having trouble getting crystal, there are caves near the river populated by imps that hold a large amount of crystal. There is one here southeast of the Sentinel statues and one north of the Shattered Bridge. One important point to cover here is that when you place the map room, do not worry if you get it in the wrong location or not quite where you want to position it, as the map room can be picked up and replaced like any other item of decor. Adventuring into the Omnid City, dungeons and attuning your bracelet to the obelisks will mean you have gained corruption. You can remove this corruption using an entertainer thrall. Watching this thrall perform will both lift your corruption also fill your health meter. Now that we have the diadem of the giant kings, the staff will now inform us of the next artifact to be collected. Oh, oh I liked her. The witch queen of Lemuria was powerful and beautiful. Uh, and not opposed to the occasional orgy. <laughs> Writhing naked upon the altar of Dagon, while her followers gave themselves over to the rites of ecstasy. Oh God, those blood-soaked moments. Quit on my heart. Oh, stiff and unyielding to a sorceress ministry. Oh, 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 sorry. Forgive me. Now, if you need her mask, I can only imagine it will not be far from her palace. Her people built a city in the eastern swamplands. In the next episode, we continue our search for the artifacts in the Palace of the Witch Queen, and look to craft hardened steel weapons and tools. We will also have a tour of the base to show all of its additions and alterations. Until next time, live, love, and get rid of your man flu. Yeah.